Good morning, folks. Welcome to February. I hope you all caught last night's magnetic space plasma video. We've got more from that realm today, including one of the best Earth field animations I've ever seen. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're looking at one bright southern region, and to the north of it, the plasma filament we've watched enter visibility and now set to reach center longitude tonight. The shaking you see in the videos is literally satellite shaking. While there isn't atmospheric turbulence in space, there is plenty of energetic turbulence. Way above our heads, the solar wind is streaming by slightly faster than normal. Despite the signature shape of an impact curve from coronal holes, the max plasma speed couldn't crack 500 kilometers per second, and thus, we are all quiet geomagnetically. Looking at 211 angstroms leaves us wanting to say the equatorial and southern low-latitude darkness is merely sparse coronal regions and not open flux of coronal holes. Might see that one miss Earth. Folks, you may have noticed that SOHO Lasco coronagraphs are not updating. The images and video available from both NASA and NOAA have not updated since January 25th, and the service notes suggest it will be weeks before they are done. Even the link they have for images takes you to the ultraviolet imagers, which pale compared to SDO, and their magnetograms, but no SOHO coronagraphs, although they do have a ground-based one. No worries, that's what those geniuses at 9 Rese are for. Folks, until NASA and NOAA are once again providing updated images and video, they are using their server to process and put together the videos. So, yes, I know the governments have no access for you on these, but we've got them thanks to 9 Rese. We're checking them regularly, and we will share them until NASA and NOAA are once again providing data from the satellites we all paid for. A couple aesthetic interests before getting to core science. This Cretaceous versus now period is interesting as a comparative look. It is worth noting that there was more than twice the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and it was much hotter than it is now, but it was also one of the life explosion periods on this planet, all of which were during periods much hotter than it is now. Up next, we're zooming in on a gorgeous cosmic dust road running through a heavily seeded stellar nursery. It is a dark nebula. The light absorptive shroud of cold material blocking electromagnetic visibility of what's inside. Very puzzling structure. And it's a big day for the IAC with two big news releases. First one, I actually find puzzling as well. They claim to have found one of the first stars of the galaxy, but also say it is still in main sequence, which means it's not dead or even close to dying yet, which again, for the first star formed in the galaxy, would be quite the trick, I think. No confusion about their other article, however, and in fact, this could be huge. They appear to suggest that they detect helical twisting, a vortex, in active galactic nuclei polar aligned jets. You know them as cosmic jets. So as if it wasn't bad enough for black hole science that material does escape along the polar jets and through that heavy ion wind we've been discussing of late, it turns out that the polar ejecta is rotating like you'd expect charged particles to do if following electromagnetic rather than gravitational pathways. Today's top story is about the equatorial electrojet, the singly ionized oxygen, and soon-to-be data collection zone for ICON and gold. But have you ever wondered what causes this double energetic pattern to the jet? The answer is an equatorial ion fountain. While particles electrically funnel into Earth's polar region, they are lightly expelled at the equator. Planetary wind, just like solar wind, only ours is incarcerated by the solar wind and shrouding our planet and Earth's magnetosphere. This forces the particles to dump just north and south of their evacuation point, settling into the denser energetic regions on the north and south boundaries of the equatorial jet. Website members, after today's deeper look coming with this month's planetary geometry, the next one is likely to involve that ion fountain. We'll be seeing him a lot, actually. We greatly appreciate your support. It's how these news come out each day. We've got your wind maps and shots of our start at close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.